Hey guys, Dan here. So today I want to talk to you about investing. Now, I do not look like an investor, right? I'm covered in sweat, got paint all over my shirt. Now, mind you, I bought this shirt for uh, about $6 eight years ago. So it doesn't really owe me anything, but it's a work shirt, okay? Cleaning up my garage, organizing, and I uh, just wanted to kind of you know, come to terms with you guys. And I, and I found some stuff in my garage that I've gotten over the years and, um, just a different perspective. So first, before we get into this, if you don't have three to six months worth of bills in your savings in a shoebox, in a safe behind the wall, I don't care where it is. If you guys don't have that first for emergency purposes, like get your shit together. All right. Stop going to Chipotle. <laughs> start, start saving where you can. How I did it has worked for me. Doesn't necessarily mean to work for you. Anytime I bought like pizza, went out to lunch, did anything that was, um, you know, that wasn't crucial, I matched that same amount. Say I spent, you know, $15 on a sandwich for lunch when I was at work. I put that same amount, $15, into my Roth IRA, uh, which I have with TD Ameritrade. Um, there was no fee. Perfect. Great. After about four months of doing this, I had six, I, I reached, I hit the income, the, the limit of what you can contribute in the given year, which is $6,000. Okay. I'm, it blew my mind. After six weeks, it takes six weeks, they say, that um, your brain basically needs to rewire itself, whether it be from, you know, cutting out sugar or carbs or whatever. Same thing happens with saving. So saving is very similar to losing weight, right? Um, and I'm sweating in here because this thing is like a heat box. Um, and, I'll, and I'll get into that. If you watch my garage and conversion video, um, you'll see that I bought a... It's like an old grocery store um, box. It's 24 feet long. Best garage decision ever, okay? Um, but it holds in the heat. So let's go back. Gold, crypto, cash, stocks, indexes, you know, uh, multi-level mark MLM, multi-level marketing. Um, it works. Where do you go? Right. A lot of you guys are lost. A lot of you guys have no direction to turn to. Um, and it makes sense. There's just too many fucking options. To be completely honest with you. Excuse my French. Um, way too many options. If, if you are in the position where you've saved three to six months worth of your savings. And whether or not you're self-employed. You work for... Uh, you know, you're a nurse, uh, you work at a hospital, whatever. If you've reached that point, um, you, you need to open up a Roth IRA. That's, that's the next step. Okay. Um, obviously you want to make sure your, all your debts paid off. Okay. Don't, don't be, don't be carrying a, a $30, uh, I mean, you know, a $500 a dollar a month car loan and think you're going to make money on a, on a Roth IRA or a quick pick stock or, you know, you read the Robin Hood headlines and you think you're going to kill it or you're going to make a ton of money in crypto because that's the next boom. Okay. You're going to lose money. Okay. I did it. Everyone I know does it. Everyone goes, oh, you know, I'm going to invest in the, I'm going to buy the It Works platform and um, me and all my friends are going to get skinny, skinny by wrapping ourselves in saran wrap for 30 bucks a month. You can use just regular saran wrap or wrap yourself in trash bags or get your fat ass out in the street and go run. It does the same thing. So, crypto. Um, there's been a lot of talk about that. The current state of economy, obviously you know our government, governments all around the world right now are printing trillions and trillions of dollars because of the whole coronavirus Um I'm not going to get into the coronavirus and my opinion on it, but everyone knows that 
you know, the governments are printing tons of money, right? What's happening is they're basically making our, our, our money. Let me see if I'll pull some out. I got something special for you guys. They're making our money worthless. Okay. Some of you guys probably haven't seen these in a while. They're making our money worthless. A $2 bill. Um, every time they print more money, the cost of goods and services increases along with it, right? We have inflation. So, I remember growing up, you know, my mom would spend 100 maybe $130 to fill up a grocery cart, local supermarket. I now go to the same grocery store. It's like $350 just because of inflation. You know, milk that was a dollar 60 is now 350, 4 bucks if you buy the crappy stuff, right? I remember not when I was in foster care and homeless. You know, we'd get down to like this much of the gallon and then fill the whole thing up with water because hey, you got new milk, right? It just diluted milk and it was white and the cereal, the shitty cereal still tasted shitty. Did not change, did not change the taste of it. Right, so we're going through a, a massive inflationary period. What's going to happen is obviously your taxes are going to go up eventually. Uh, I think 26. So when Trump became in office, he rolled back the old tax plan. Um, so 2026, the taxes are supposed to go back to their pre-highs. So right now they're at the lowest they've ever been, income taxes. They're supposed to go back to their pre-highs in 26 unless the new president extends it beyond that. Um, so instead of paying maybe 12% income tax, you might pay 15%. Okay, that's, given our current state of affairs, that's likely to happen. If you're at 22%, you might be at 25%, whatever. People are also going to be making more money, right? What happens if you make more money? You pay more in taxes, right? Right? And if the cost of goods and services are going up, you'll be making more money, more tax revenue. There's a, it's cyclical, right? It, it's, it's going to happen. Um, so what you need to do is obviously save as much as possible, live below your means. Now, in regards, so if you've gotten this far, congratulations, because my videos suck. Um, so I applaud you. If you've already opened up the Roth IRA, you've maxed it out. You know, you put 6,000 in there and you're like, all right, you know, I want to buy a little bit of this stock, a little bit of this stock, a little bit of this stock, try to beat the market. I'm playing on Robinhood, brokerage account. Um, and I'll make another video kind of talking about the different accounts, but basically the Roth IRA, you can contribute up to $6,000 a year. You can't write it off your taxes as a tax break, but when you reach retirement age and you go to withdraw the money in the funds, you don't pay taxes on the gain. That's the benefit of Roth IRA and anyone can do it, okay? Anyone. Um, I think you have to be 18, um, but you could do it if you wanted to open up a, a trust, you know, and open up a Roth IRA in the trust for your children, you could do that as well. Um, and your husband and spouse should do it. So if you're roughly 30 years old and you max out the Roth IRA, and just given, say you only invest in the S&P 500, you know, you know, each person could, by the time you're 65, I think your account ends up being like around 900,000, right? All you have to do is invest 6,000 a year. It's not that much money. You know, just don't go buy, don't go buy a BMW you can't afford. Okay, moving on. Oh, well, not really. So as far as stock picking, unless you're, unless you have full-time access, you have, you're so analytical that you can read trends and that's what you do for a living. Don't try to pick, don't try to pick stocks. Seriously. Um, just, and it's a $3,000 minimum, but just, just invest into a Vanguard fund. Uh, it's a $3,000 minimum because it works. Um, the Vanguard 500 fund 
tracks the 500 largest companies uh, in America, right? Now, some of you guys are going to say, well, that's not diversified. Okay, well, the 500 largest companies in America are probably overseas in Europe and Asia as well. Okay, so technically you kind of are diversified. By an index fund, because it self-automates, right? So say the company, say the company's doing poorly. I don't know, uh, pick one. Um, uh, I, I, can't even, I can't even think. I'm trying to look around my garage to figure out what company would do for it. I, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, ben Moore, that's not a company that you can invest in because Warren Buffett owns it. But um, say, they're, say their earnings drop substantially. They're going to automatically come off. Um, they'll go from 499, 500, 501, and then they're off the index fund. You don't have to do anything. There's no guesswork. So you're constantly going to be, you know, in the top tier, getting the top results, Johnson & Johnson um, results across the board. Medical, pharmaceutical, technology, you name it. If it's doing well, you'll be into it. Okay. Why is that beneficial? That's beneficial because part of the, this part of the CARES Act the federal government, now the federal government can't directly buy stocks and bonds. So what they did was open up a corporation. The corporation then started buying up massive amounts of corporate debt, basically through stocks and bond purchases. Okay, who are they going to buy up? The top 500 largest companies that employ millions of people. Okay, so you'll notice you know, since the virus started, that the trend is climbing insane. There's a reason for that. Partially because savings rates have gone up. People aren't going out. They went from like 5% to 43% savings rates in personal bank accounts because people aren't spending money on dumb shit they didn't need and they can't go out anywhere. Um, and then because the, the government's buying corporate debt, basically. And that's what stocks and bonds are. It's essentially corporate debt. Um, so they're going to go up. If that's all you get out of this, fantastic. Go buy a Vanguard index fund. And I recommend Vanguard only because it's the only index fund that's owned by the people. There's a lot of books read on this, so I'm not going to try to quote anyone. Um, there's a lot of books written on this that uh, basically there is no giant lavish offices, right, where your money's getting dwindled down to nothing. There's no private vacations. So their their um their fees I think are point point zero three percent, which is next to nothing. Right. So say you're say you're um in some sort of mutual fund for your company, and their expected rate is eight percent. Great, fantastic. And then inflation, which is you know, which we talked about is roughly around 2%, 1 1.6 to 2% a year, right? So say you're at 6% now, right? Is your expected rate of return because you have to adjust for inflation. Okay, let's not even get into taxes. Um, so you're at 2%. Then what you want to look for is expense ratio. So um, Vanguard is 0.03%. Great. So then we're right under, what, 5, you know, 5 point whatever percent, 5.97% is what your, your, your rate of return is. Now, if you say you're in a mutual fund, like I know a lot of you guys are that work for corporate headquarters, Bed Bath & Beyond, um, a lot of these big companies will say, hey, we'll give you a 401k plan, we'll do a mutual fund. Their expense ratios are one and a half, two 2% annually, right? So now you, you start at eight, inflation's 2%, another expense ratio of 2%, now you're really only making four and you haven't paid the government, you're not making any money. Okay, You're better off just putting your money into a savings account, a high yield savings account with like Ally. Does that, I hope that makes sense. Okay. So, so that's that. As far as gold and silver is concerned, gold and silver is, sorry, the mailman just went by. 
um, gold and silver is used for as a hedge against inflation. Um, right, so when the economy is doing poorly, gold and silver tend to go up. Everyone rushes to the gold and silver dealer uh, and buy up as much as they can. Not only that, um, countries, countries, big countries, buy lots of gold. It's a, it's, it's not so much silver, but mostly gold. Gold is one of those things that's tangible, right? You can hold it in your hand. Um, it's accepted anywhere in the world. There's no, there's no necessarily tax on it. I'm not talking about a gold ETF. I'm talking about physical, physical gold. You know, this isn't, this isn't real gold, but physical fucking gold. Um, you, it's, it's tangible. You can bring it anywhere in the world. So when th- the whole virus thing happened, um, the, everyone saw that the airlines were plummeting. Gas prices just took a dump. Okay. Cargo ships were in the ocean filled with oils, barrels of oil because they hadn't, they had no use for them. They couldn't sell them belong below the, it was like $38 a barrel production rate. I mean, the, the price went negative for futures contract. So the, a country like Venezuela, whereas their entire GDP is based on oil production, um, it hits the bricks. Um, they, they lost everything. Um, so if you look it up, they basically asked Iran for help. They wouldn't ask America because Venezuela and America really aren't on good terms. Uh, Venezuela is a communist country, um, and they they basically torture their citizens. So they asked Iran for help, and I don't quote me on this, but I believe they give gave Iran it's like four hundred million in bars of gold, right? Because their currency is worth nothing. Um, their currency is so devalued. Because they've printed so much of it, just like in Weimar Germany, um, and during the Great World War, um, basically when you print off so much money, the value of the currency loses drastically uh, its value. But they had gold reserves. Okay, so they gave Iran it's like four hundred million dollars worth of gold to save their ass and come rebuild their refineries because they couldn't export any any oil. No one would take it. Uh, I gotta sit down. So I I don't know if you guys have been paying attention. Gold and silver have been skyrocketing. Um, about three weeks ago, I had I had predicted that gold would go above two thousand mark. I think yesterday when I looked, it was like I don't know twenty one hundred. Silver was at I want to say it was at twenty four ninety yesterday when I looked, and it was. About three weeks ago, it was at like 16. So I, of course, I bought a bunch. Um, and I've done this before. So this is why I'm talking about this. Years and years ago, um, I had bought up, I don't know, it was a couple thousand dollars worth of silver. Uh, bullions, just the little ones. Get from any pawnbroker. Right now, you can't find any. No one's selling, at least in my area, no one's selling them. Uh, because they know the price is going to go up. Right. So it went up to forty dollars an ounce. I sold everything I had. The price plummeted. Um, no, I'm not. I'm Oracle or anything like that. Definitely no Warren Buffett. It's gold and silver is a controlled commodity. As much as some of you are probably going to disagree with me, and that's fine. I I don't really give a shit. Gold and silver has never reached crazy crazy all-time peaks as much as people want to say you know gold's going to hit five thousand dollars an ounce and a hundred thousand dollars an ounce it's not and i'm going to say it's not only because governments control it right um they control the production of it just like diamonds right right we think that diamonds are crazy expensive and they're crazy valuable it's not it's only valuable because um Really, there's a couple places in the world that can control how many diamonds get released every year. 
right? But past that, it, in drilling, it really doesn't have much value. So just just keep it in the back of your mind, right? Gold and silver might go crazy up high because over speculation, and then it's going to come down. It will. The point is just to get it as high as you can. Um, sorry, I'm sweating. It's like I, I think it's probably 100 degrees in this thing. But I wanted to make this video for you guys, and it's windy as hell outside. So what can you do? Should you turn to crypto? In 2017, I would say September, uh, I had started hearing a lot more talk about crypto. Now, back in 2011, I had a friend who introduced me to Bitcoin. And um, it was brilliant. But I'm like, this guy's out of his mind. He's crazy. He had this little USB chip plugged into his little desktop Microsoft shitbox computer in his basement. And the thing just running all day long. His computer's hot, hot, hot. Right? It's just mining. Didn't think anything of it. He's like, yeah, I got like 0.3 Bitcoin. You know, it's only at 300 bucks a Bitcoin right now. But it'll go up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You're already a ledger. What the hell's a what the hell's a digital ledger, right? Okay, I was I was the poor kid when everyone else had a PlayStation. I had an Atari. I still have a 1984 Atari. Okay, my kids love the hell out of it. It's fantastic. Um, it's, I got a blow on the games and everything. Like, yeah, it's it's funny. It's because I'm cheap. So, anyway, so I saw that in 2011. I saw Bitcoin. It's like 300 bucks. A Bitcoin. 2011. Oh, sorry. No, that was that was in 2011. 2017. Um, the price was climbing substantially. I'm like, ooh, you know, I'm I'm gonna get in. This is this is something I downloaded Coinbase. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna be one of the cool kids. And I went to Litecoin first. And I'm like, all right, it's at it was at like I don't know seventy dollars a Litecoin, whatever. And I'm like, all right, this sounds a cool technology. I, I looked into it. It went up to like three hundred. I'm like, that's it. I'm getting a I'm getting a Lambo. No, no, not gonna happen at all. It plummeted, went down to like hundred and twenty, and it's still falling and <laughs> never recovered. Bitcoin, on the other hand, went crazy high, and I'm like, oh look at all these other. I should learn about Ethereum and alternative coins and Tron. I still have forty five thousand Tron that I bought at I think five cents. Um. I was into about six grand. And my portfolio literally went to like thirty-eight thousand dollars overnight while I was sleeping. I didn't have a clue, right? I was on the thing until literally I couldn't keep my eyes open anymore. Eleven thirty, one o'clock in the morning. You know, I'd work fourteen-hour days, then I come home, jump on my computer, um, and be like, "Oh my god, my portfolio is going crazy." You know, my six grand went from ten to twelve. So literally overnight, it went to like 35. The next morning I woke up. Now we're getting into like the end of December at this point. Uh, we're getting right close to the Chinese New Year. I turned on my thing and I'm like, oh my God, I went to 35,000 and now it's at 12. You know what? I'm going to hold on. I'm still good. This has time to recover. It's just a dip. No problem. Not a problem at all. Um, well, it never recovered. In fact, I just looked at it today. I went on my, uh, um, what the hell is it called? I'm not using Coinbase anymore. I went to Binance, right? And the, the government shut down Binance. And now there's like a EU Binance and I think there's a US Binance. I don't know. Um, but I went on my Binance and my portfolio was worth like $1,400. Mike, you got to be kidding me. So it's been three years. I didn't sell anything. I just kept my shitty portfolio that's... And what happened, I noticed, is all of a sudden I'm seeing all these different altcoins, right? So like Tron split, I have a bunch of different altcoins, which means it's just another just another coin. So when they reach maximum capacity, they just do what it's called a split, and um, they'll just issue something else, right? So I have like BNB, I have a bunch of stuff I've never heard of, and it just happens automatically, right? Twenty thousand of this coin worth point zero 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 one cents worth 20 bucks i'm like well i put a thousand into it how's it worth only 20 because they did a split right they just 
just literally taking your money. I'm hoping with all the speculation, I'm going to use that word a lot. I'm hoping with all the speculation right now in the economy, my portfolio will go back to at least where what I put into it. You know, if Bitcoin goes up to $30,000, you know, everything else will probably rise with it because Bitcoin will get to the point where it's too much money for the average Joe to invest in. So they'll start speculating on other things, Ethereum and, um, and whatnot. So there's been a lot of people who've made a lot of money on it. A lot of people more more than a lot of people who have lost a fortune with cryptocurrency. Same with anything, right? So where am I going with this? So the dollars the dollar's losing value. It's deflating while our economy is inflating. So the cost of goods and services is going to go up. Gold and silver, up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Bitcoin, no one knows anything about, really, unless... And I tried making my own coin for you to do this. Make sure you do it legally as much as everyone says, well, it's, you know, it's decentralized and you don't need government. Bullshit, because I tried making a coin... And it was, um, I wanted it to, I wanted the funds to basically make a bunch of uh, uh, mining, comp, a bunch, set up a bunch of miners when it was, you know, when, the, when it was hot. And um, the money I wanted to use to, to build houses for vets. Um, not that we don't have enough houses in this, you know, in the, in already, but affordable housing basically for veterans. That was what I wanted to do with it. I got shut down by the SEC so fast. I got a cease and desist letters. I had them showing up at my house. Um, it was it was bad. Um, there was four people out of Massachusetts. There was four people. It was put in the Cape Cod Times. I had basically sign a waiver and show proof that I've I I, I made a hundred bucks. I didn't say I made a hundred bucks. I had taken in a hundred dollars um, from the account after I set it up. I set it up with a friend who was who was who works in tech, and um, we went through the Ethereum process and everything. And uh, basically, I had taken in a hundred bucks. I had to give the hundred dollars back to the person who who bought into it. That's kind of like an angel investor kind of thing, um, just so we could get the ball rolling. And to give it all back, um, and the SEC shut it shut me down pretty hard. Um, so I won't do that again. There's no law right now that says you can't invest in silver and gold. So if you want to speculate on that, just know that it will go up. It will come down. You only lose money when you sell. Okay, so remember that. Now, if you want to do my approach, get your savings under control. Set up a Roth IRA that will grow. And I'm going to show you guys something else that has, up until recently... Really, since I started cleaning out my garage, I was going, oh, you know what? These things have more value than I was thinking of. And I'll show you what they are. Um, now, there's a couple different things. Again, get your savings under control, emergency fund, whatnot. But there's some things that will always go up in value. Bullets. Now, everything I'm going to show you literally... Because of what I do for work, I clean out houses, do lots of construction. People give me, and they just want to throw the, throw the stuff away. Um, if I can find a use for it, I don't like throwing it away. Like these cabinets from 1980 that I tore out of the basement across the street from me. Are basically look brand new. My, my neighbor came over the other day and was like, wow, those cabinets look um, better than the ones I have in my house. I said, well, I cleaned them up. I literally wipe them down, but they do look brand new, except for one sagging door. Anyways, bullets. Bullets will never lose value. You can always need to protect your family. Um, it's just not going to lose. It's just not going to lose value. I'll show you some other stuff. Magazines. Magazines will not lose value. Now, I think this one only holds 10, 12, something like that. Um, it was given to me a long time ago. 
old military memorabilia. So this is a bayonet. Some lady gave to me. You can see how it goes in the front right there. People love military memorabilia. Remember, this is all stuff that people have thrown away. If you guys can see that or not. Sorry if it's backwards. Just uh, a thing of bolts. 50 caliber, 240 grain XTP. I, I don't know. I don't even have a gun that would shoot this, but um, it'll be worth money one day, I guess. Um, so that so that's some stuff, right? You can. You can have a bunch of cash, all right? That's devaluing. Have a bunch of bullets. I'll show you some other cool stuff. So stuff like this will always have money. Will always worth something. It's made out of a like elk tusk. Um, I don't know where this stuff was made, but there's people are throwing away. This is ivory. Uh, my neighbor, who's from the Philippines, said it's worth a fortune, and they do this stuff, and they, uh, this stuff's worth a ton of money. It's, it's from, like, a deer or something. I don't know. But I could always sell this stuff. Again, you know, someone's trash is another man's treasure. I'll show you some other cool stuff. So I did this, I cleaned out this hoarding house. So if anyone ever asks you to clean out a hoarding house, take the job. Okay. Um, hold on, sorry. I, I gotta put you down. Okay, let me see. So that's silver plated. Hold on, I'm gonna turn you guys around. So. This is all just vintage jewelry. Take a second, look at it. People throw this stuff away. You know, an old time piece. I got a ton of this stuff. So you don't necessarily have to go out and buy silver and gold. People throw this shit away. People, I have literally people standing at my dump every day looking for um, gold and silver. No, some of this probably isn't might not be worth anything, but I've sold a ton on, like, Facebook. And people will buy it, especially religious stuff. This is all silver. Silver. Big silver spoon. Oh, this is one of my favorite pieces. This is worth probably, I think it's around four to $600. Look how beautiful that is. A woman's person. Again, someone threw this stuff away. I got a ton of it. So a friend of mine actually organized some of this stuff and labeled it. Because we're going to try selling it on Facebook. Not the can opener. But um, pins. No, not that. So we got some sterling silver spoons. Sterling silver tray. Some old beads, you know, vintage stuff like this. It's silver. It's all worth money. You guys don't necessarily. Let's see what else I got in there. You guys don't necessarily need to go out and spend a fortune on buying gold and silver. People throw this trash away. It's not very trash because there is collectors. Just look it up on eBay. If you go, on, no, let me turn it back on. If you guys go on eBay and you type in. Victorian brush, right? I think that's a Victorian, or, I don't know. These things go for, I don't know, from $20, $20 to like 100 150 Depends on what it's made out of, right? But all you have to do, don't look, don't look at what's for sale. Go to refine results and look for what's sold, and that'll tell you, that'll give you the true value. It's not how much you think you can get for it. It's what people are actually willing to pay for it. That goes with everything. But honestly, for what it's worth, I think trash is, trash is key. Not to mention, I'm gonna show you guys something else. Um, where is it? 
Oh, right, hold on. Flip this back around. So, I've bought a couple tools in my life. I bought these pressure washers under here. Um, I bought one of those. This is a repurposed uh, finish nailer. Other than that, I've never bought a tool in my life. Uh, this was given to me for free. Um, fine tools given to me for free. Dremels, uh, a planer. That's a ton of Makita tools, uh, skill saws. Uh, that was given me for free. Um, my drills, impact driver. Uh, I did just have to replace it and I got a new one. So I did pay for that one. It was like, I bought it used, um, but it, the batteries fit. Um, I got that one for free. That was given me for free. My table saw was given me for free. All my toolboxes were given me for free, just out of people's houses. The point is you don't need to spend money. Um, now with all those free tools, I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars over the year. Crazy money fixing up people's houses. And I, I made a business from it. Uh, the stuff I've gotten for free. So uh, I want him in a little cheap. You know, as you can see, my, I think I got my shirt down to like 15 cents a year is like my spending habits for my clothes because they just don't see, there's no value in it. Really, it's just basically don't, so I don't scare people with my dad bod. Um, you can you can do pretty well if you're savvy. You can do pretty well. Um, this is a nation of comeback kids. You know, um, so someone who grew up poor like me in foster care and homeless shelters and crack houses and uh, walk-in closets. Uh, and there's a, there was a point in my life where in one foster house, I was allowed three tall teen crackers a day and a glass of milk for dessert. Um, the point is that you can make a life for yourself. Don't necessarily follow the trends of speculating on stuff like, like Bitcoin or thinking that you're going to make tons of money if you invest in Amazon, right? There is, there's people out there whose entire job is to study human psychology. So if the government sees an uptick in, you know, gold and silver, right, they'll let it ride a little bit and then they're going to they're gonna cash in or and they're going to let it crash and burn. And a lot of people are going to lose their money. Th there's, there's human psychology that you have to take into account when investing. So I was saying, if you are going to, which is a good idea, you know, the Vanguard Index Fund is probably the best thing to do um, the other thing you want to do, invest in yourself, right? Get the tools to better your life. Um, this one I might get some, this, this I might get some slack for. Be Obsessed or Be Average by Grant Cardone. Um, I read that a long time ago when I, when I first started my business. Um, and that got me pumped, but it, I will say it put me in the wrong mindset, whereas I was making so much money, but I was literally spending so much money because I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to build my business to be a Fortune 500 company. And it didn't work. I just paid more in taxes, more on workers' comp. Um, I had a bunch of lazy employees. And no, that Fiji water I did not pay for. I actually just buy it for my wife, and then I refill it from the tap. Um, and I've had those for probably three months. So my cost of ownership is like six cents. Um, so Be Obsessed with Be Average is a great book Richest Man of Babylonia fantastic book uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad just just read the first one Don't I wouldn't bother reading all the rest of his books um, except for Who Stole My Pension that's pretty good um, a lot of them are very repetitive um, but if you can invest in yourself education you know, learn a new skill, a trade. Um, you don't necessarily need to go to college and spend a hundred thousand. You could spend, you know, five hundred bucks and go to a community college, learn how to be a plumber, learn how to be an electrician. That I think that's going to be the new transition for the new America. People are going to learn how to be self-reliant again. Um, 
I was just I was just telling you how it's so hot in here. I'm learning how to put an AC. I'm not an HVAC guy. I have no knowledge of how to put an AC. But Mr. Cool AC, they have a do-it-yourself AC unit where you literally install the thing. There's a million videos on YouTube just like this one. Let me show you how to do it. It's not going to cost you 12 grand to put AC in your house. It's like three. Okay, that could be a business. You could sell it to someone else for six and it takes you a day and a half. Great, you just made $3,000. Try thinking outside the box. You don't need to follow the trends. Um, I think that's all I have to say about gold and silver and Bitcoin and um, sterling. 1756. No, I don't know whose engravings these are, but this thing might be worth a hundred bucks. Someone's gonna throw away. You know, even if I keep it for my kids, who cares? It was trash to someone. It's trash to me. I think that's. I think that's about it for today. Anyways, uh, I hope you guys all got your stimulus checks. Um, and use it to pay off your debt, I guess. And if you've already paid off your debt and you haven't opened up a Roth IRA, um, there's a bunch of companies that do it. That'd be. I told, I'm telling you, that's my first first word of advice: Roth IRA. Um, if you if you have the extra twelve hundred, you don't know what to do with it, and invest it in yourself somehow. Um, really, that's my my best advice. Learn a new trade. You know, um, trades people make more than nurses and doctors, and unless you're a specialist, um, specialist, not specialist, specialist. Um, yeah. Silver and gold will probably keep going up. Bitcoin will probably keep going up as we spend more and more money, at least until probably December or January, unless the virus, you know, the cases of virus start declining and the economy gets better worldwide. Those things will keep going up because people will keep speculating. Um, I keep looking away because I suck at YouTube videos, so I'm sorry. But um, anyways, I hope you guys are all the best, and uh, I'm going to get back to my garage conversion.